Hello, Pete here again with another vlog. Uh, this week we're looking at Wild Flowers 2. This is one of my favourite sets and we're going to look at doing some special little backgrounds. Okay, Wild Flowers 2, the second collection from Tim Holtz. This is a set of seven flowers and this one is a lovely foxglove. Now, I'm just going to cut that out of approximately 300 gram and it's cream car. I'm going to use my big shot. I'm going to place that like so, make the sandwich and run it through. Now, let's pull that away. It's a lovely, lovely delicate shape as you can see. And you can save this and use it as a stencil if you wish. Now, I'm just going to take my tweezers and pop this shape out. There we are. Always be careful with these delicate little elements like the leaves at the base and so on and so forth. But there we have it. Now, I want to give that a little extra dimension. So I'm going to bring in this foam mat and a ball end stylus and I'm just adding just a touch of dimension so when it sits against the background it rises away from it just ever so slightly creating that play of light and shadow. Now let's take that to one side and it's the backgrounds that I'm interested in at this point. Now this is a standard acrylic stamp block and we're going to use this as a printing plate. Now it's good to practice this because it doesn't always go right first time, but we'll see how we get on. So I'm using three different shades of ink. I'm using, so we'll start off, in fact, let's take the stamp off there. We'll start off with, this is Broken China. And I'm just going to bring my craft mat in at this point. So I'm going to pat that on there, covering the whole of the block. Now, of course, this ink remains active and you can reactivate it with water. So this is Peacock Feathers and I'm just going to dab that strategically. Finally, Chipped Sapphire, lovely colour this. And just around the edges, just bits and pieces. Now, you could stamp straight onto the card but it really comes to life when you use a mister or spritzer. There's clean water in this and I'm just going to come in very, very lightly. The worst thing that you could do at this point is put too much water on there um, and that's why you really need to practice. It only takes a couple of goes to get it right. So, take away my crab mat and move on to here. Now, oh! Goodness me. You see, that's the great thing about live filming. It doesn't always work out. But we won't use that one. We'll use another one. So you see, don't be like Pete. Don't be a Butterfingers. But you can see the effect we get. Isn't that great? So there's some mottling here. You can see where those colours have blended together there. But we're going to use another colour anyway. Now, let's take away our inks. And we'll bring in three new colours. Right, persimmon, picked raspberry, and seedless preserves. So, uh, I'll start off with the picked raspberry. And again, we'll take this out and bring in our craft mat. There we are. And you end up a disaster today, trying too hard. That's what it is, trying too hard. These colours blend beautifully together, this ripe persimmon and finally seedless preserves. I'm going to work specifically around the edges and just dab a little on the corner of the ink before activating again with my spritzer. Just lightly spritz, like so. Take away the craft pad and take a very firm grip on your acrylic block. Now, we'll place that face down and just let it sit. And you can start to see here the colours blending. You can push that in a little bit more. And then we'll remove 
with it. There, like so. And you can see where it's pulled there. That's fine. You can pull that across. Or you can dab it clear with some kitchen paper. But it is a random effect, so it's going to be different every time. I think that one, once it dries off, I think that's going to look gorgeous. So, next up, let's clear some of that water off the craft mat. We're going to look at some lovely... We'll do one more set, I think. It's fossilised amber, spiced marmalade and vintage photo. So we always start off with the lightest of the colours, which in this case is fossilised amber. Uh, let's just drag that across as well. So, spice marmalade next. Slightly darker. There we are, concentrate around the edges, using the corner as well. And finally, vintage photo. And this one, I'm just working in the top corners. Like so. Now, again, lightly spritz, so don't hold it too close. Hold it about six inches or 15 centimeters above. Now, there we have it. Remove our craft mat. Back in with our card. And pop that face down there, like that. See all the colors blending, isn't that gorgeous? And I'll drag that across, just like that with the corner. And again, that's a lovely, another lovely background. Ready to go. If you want to take some of that pigment out, you can do that with the edge of the kitchen paper, like, just like that. Now, next thing, let's dry that off with our heat tool. It doesn't take long. And there we are. Now I'll choose one of these backgrounds. I don't know, I like them all so much. Shame that blue one slipped in my hand. Never mind. There we are. Now, I think I think we'll choose this one on the end here. And we'll just trim that down to size. I want to leave about mm, five millimeters just around the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to scuff the edge up in a second anyway. So there we have it, there's our background. Again, using the edge of the scissors, like so. All the way around. Then I just want to add some stamped detail to this as well. So this is, um, a fine text stamp, and I'm going to work on my craft mat again, just dry that off. And I'm going to use it's a lovely light grey ink, it's called London Fog, made by Memento. Ink up the stamp, just bring that in there on the edge, like so, pressing firmly down. It's quite a subtle effect, but it does add to it. At the end. Now, remember our lovely die cut. We want to find a nice place for this. So remember we used our stylus just to raise some of the edges of the leaves. So I'm just going to put the glue up the centre, up the spine of the flower, like so, and attach it. Now as is the way with me, usually I like to make sure a little bit comes off the edge of the top, a little bit off the base and a little bit off the side as well. And then once that's in place, I'll take my glue gun and this is a little bow which I created from some twine earlier on. Had a blob of glue and attach it somewhere near the base. 
And there we have it, there's our background. Now, what you do with it thereafter is entirely up to you. You could add it to a tag or a card, and I'll show you some that I made earlier. I love saying that. So there's this one, lovely green background. That's the one we didn't get to see, the green. Then we've got the red, so that's mixing those colors before. But again, it's a totally different effect to the one that we had. If you remember our earlier one, I, I used more of one color than the other. So that's quite different. Then we have our orange background. And finally, the one that escaped us, the blue. So you can see I just used 3D foam pads to get some dimension on those um, and, uh, and use the uh, postmark stamp underneath. So simple as that. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want more inspiration and ideas, want to go to sizzix.co.uk. Bye.